You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Shadow Hunter. Close those blinds, Frank. Make sure you get them all. That lightning will spoil the final stage of my experiment. There's no need to worry, Dr. Stephen. I'm sure we're quite safe indoors. Quite. But any ambient light will upset the delicate calculations of this chemical process. This experiment must be completed in a state of twilight, as close to complete darkness as it is possible to make our observations in. Now, finish with those blinds. Right away, Doctor. Mind telling me what this is about? You're my lab assistant, Mr. Derry. Do not presume too much. I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't mean anything by it, but... If I'm to help you, shouldn't I at least have an idea of what we're doing? Of course. Of course, my dear boy. Please forgive me, it's the excitement. To be this close to a breakthrough in a matter so close to my life's work. Your life's work? Does this have something to do with the saber-tooth remains? Indeed it does, my dear boy. Synchronize those resonators for me. Yes, sir. Are we extracting more cellular material? No, Frank. We have harvested all the material needed from those frozen remains of the great saber-toothed tiger I discovered in the far north. So many years. So great an effort to come almost within reach of the mighty creature of the past. It was a thrilling discovery, Dr. Stephen. To find even partial remains in such a well-preserved state is as close as man will ever come to studying those magnificent, primitive beasts in the wild. I thought so too, dear boy. I thought so too. Calibrate those electrodes to the levels on this checklist. Right away. What do you mean by, I thought so too? You make it sound as if you'd found a live saber tooth to study. You sound incredulous. What if I told you that such a thing were possible? Doctor? Yes, my boy. You see, those frozen remains contained more information than any other ever found. The cells of the beast were flash-frozen in a manner I cannot begin to imagine. I now believe I can reconstruct a living specimen from those preserved cells. That's incredible. How would you achieve such a thing? With this formula of my own devising, the cellular extractions of the mighty saber-toothed tiger held in a suspension with a photosensitive transformation agent. I don't understand. You see, my dear Mr. Derry, it isn't possible to reconstitute an extinct species entirely from scratch, but this agent allows the processed saber-tooth essence to take over another living creature, to rewrite its cellular information, if you will. How is that possible? It is an adaptation of a secret formula intended to aid in the regeneration of damaged human tissue. I discovered the cause of the formula's failure was its sensitivity to the energy emissions of light itself. Light? Yes. Light inhibits the transformative powers of the formula, even reverses them to an extent. In time, the transformation is complete and the new creature can exist normally. Until then, particularly in the final stages, exposure to light must be severely restricted. What animal have you selected for the host? A panther? A modern tiger? Inside those gaps in the console are two retractable gauges. Reach in and pull them out, would you? Of course, Doctor. Dr. Stephen, 
Something's wrong. Something's got hold of my hand. Nothing is wrong, Frank. The restraints are for your own safety. What? I'm sorry, Frank. You're mad! Let me go! I had thought of using a large cat species as the host, but the transformative agent was designed to work on human tissue. This way seems to have the greatest chance of success. Doctor! You can't do this! Oh, but I can, Mr. Darry. I can and I must. I'm sorry that it has come to this, but what is the life of one man, more or less, when one has the opportunity to return an entire species to the Earth? Think of the greater good. Let me go! I'm warning you! (laughs) Oh, my boy! You are in no position to make threats. The treatments begin now. And soon, history's mightiest hunter will stalk the night once more. (laughs) Extra, extra, read all about it. Woman killed in vicious animal attack. Extra. Extra, animal killer claims two more victims. Police say vicious animal, likely escaped jungle cat, local zoos checked. Animal attacks enter second week. Dozens hurt or killed. No end of crisis in sight. Extra, read all about it. Well, boss, it's a nice clear night for a stroll along the rooftops. Yes, Kit. Though I wish we had more of a moon to hunt by. Do we even know what we're hunting for? I'm afraid not. Chief O'Malley is keeping security tight on this case. I haven't been able to get into the morgue to examine the remains of the victims. I'm afraid we don't have much more information than anyone else who reads the newspapers. Well, the Chronicle ran an eyewitness item today that said the beast was a saber-toothed tiger. Yes, I saw that. But, but Panda, that's impossible. The saber-toothed tiger is extinct. Everybody knows that. Perhaps everyone except the tiger itself. Very funny. What's the plan? Here. Look at this map. The beast, whatever it is, seems to be hunting within this range. Ooh, that's an awful lot of territory. I know, we'll have to split up. I'll take the west side along here. You head this way and we'll meet back here. We'll keep in touch with the new radio rings. Now, this thing's killed nine people, maybe more. Those that survived say it can't be stopped. Mind telling me what I'm supposed to do if I find it? I'm sure you'll think of something. Real nice. Try to find whomever is controlling the beast. If we can neutralize the intelligence behind these attacks, we might stand a chance with the creature itself. You think there's a person behind this? I'm sure of it, Squirrel. The pattern is too strong. Most of the victims have been female, all very attractive. If you like that sort of thing. Everyone else that has been killed or injured has been trying to rescue one of those victims. Maybe the tiger's just picking smaller targets. Maybe... But I still sense a twisted mind at work here. In any case, radio me right away if anything comes up. Right, boss. Shh. It's all right. Oh, you had a big day, haven't you? Yes, you have. We'll be home soon. Go home and see Daddy. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Flying Squirrel, the Red Panda. Flying Squirrel, the Red Panda. Come in, Red Panda. Red Panda here. Go ahead, Squirrel. Gosh, boss, I can hear you loud and clear. Wow, these new radio rings are fantastic. Have you found any sign of the beast? Oh, nothing that exciting. But I have tripped over a pretty young mother pushing a baby carriage through a bad neighborhood. Probably taking a shortcut to try and get off the street faster. Either way, she's going to get herself killed. I'm going to step off my route and follow her home, just in case. Good girl. I think I've got a lead at this end. I'll keep you posted. A lead? Well, can you stall until I get there? I don't think so. Don't worry, I can manage. Red Panda out. (sighs) Squirrel out. Hmm. Trust a boss to hog the excitement for himself while I pull Girl Scout duty. How's he going to handle a saber-toothed cat? Maybe he's got a saber-toothed bulldog up his sleeve. Little mama here, I'll light a fire under it, I might just get to him in time. No, don't 
stop and tuck the baby in? You're on one of the most dangerous corners in the city, and you're practically wearing a sign that says, Hi, I'm completely defenseless. Jeez. If anything happens to the boss because I'm babysitting you, you're going to have one ticked-off flying squirrel to contend with. <laughs> Keep that mutt quiet, would you? He's supposed to be a saber-toothed tiger. So what? So a tiger's a cat, and cats don't bark, see? If this is gonna work, it's gotta be fast and quiet. You don't think anybody's gonna fall for that costume you got Rex in, do you? He looks ridiculous. He looks fine. The whole city's on the edge of their seats, seeing saber-toothed tigers in every shadow. When Rex runs into that place in this costume, it'll empty out plenty fast. Don't you worry. Then we clean the joint out real nice. Remember, don't get fancy. We only have a couple of minutes to empty the place before the cops throw everything they got at the place. But how are we going to keep the cops from catching wise? Yeah, dummy. We kill the lights in there, and we leave this dictaphone behind. A dictaphone? Yeah, it plays a recording of animal noises. The cops will surround the place, thinking they got their monster cornered. Meanwhile, you and me and Rex hit a few more nightclubs, grab enough dough to clear out of this town, and lay low for a year, maybe more. It's a sweet caper, all right. Yeah, sweet and foolproof. Right, foolproof. Right, foolproof. Why'd you say that twice? I didn't. You did. Don't get smart. I ain't getting smart. You're the smart one. I don't think there's much risk of either of you getting smart in the near future. What the... Behind us! That mask, it's the Red Panda! That's right, boys. Time to end your deadly game. Not if I end you first. Drop the gat, tough guy! Oh, my arm! I said drop it! That's better. Now you two are coming with me. That's what you think. Sick him, Rex! (laughs) Yeah, Rex will finish you good, you masked freak. I don't think so. Rex is very calm, aren't you, Rex? In fact, I think Rex is becoming very sleepy, aren't you, boy? Very sleepy. What the? He's out like a light. You can't hypnotize a dog. Maybe you should have told Rex that. Now we'll see how the police like your murderous con game. Why, you dirty, take that! Hey, hey, stand still, you coward! Certainly! You've knocked him out cold. You didn't have to do that. All part of the service for murderous scum like you. You got it all wrong. It ain't us behind these killings. We just wanted to scare people out of that nightclub so we could rob the place. You'd say anything now. Why should I believe you? It's the truth. You've got to believe me. I swear. Convince me. Open your mind to mine. Your mind to mine. Yes. Are you behind these vicious animal attacks? No. Do you know who is? No. You're just parasites trying to feed on the city's terror? Yes. How many times have you pulled this caper? None. We was gonna try it three or four times tonight, that's all. Then what? Then we was gonna lay low. Why? Well, there's warrants out for the both of us. You will take your friend and Rex to the nearest police station. You will tell them what your plan was and what transpired here. You will confess in full to any crimes you are guilty of. Am I making myself clear? Yes. Good. Get out of here before I change my mind. I obey. If there weren't bigger fish to fry, I'd teach those two a proper lesson myself. But there's still a wild hunter loose in my city somewhere, and I've wasted too much time on this hoax already. Red Panda to Flying Squirrel. Red Panda to Flying Squirrel. Come in, Squirrel. Right here, boss. How's your young mother? She got away, all right. Got away? Did you run into trouble? I think you could say that. Hmm. I thought for a moment I'd found our culprits, but it turned out to be nothing more than a pair of cowardly copycats out to take advantage of the fear caused by these attacks. Squirrel? Do you read me? I say again, Flying Squirrel, do you read me? Sure, boss, I'm still here. For the moment. For the moment? What does that mean? It means someone else might have something to say about that. Who? What was that? Squirrel. Squirrel, can you hear me? Kit! Kit! listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Okay.
Hey, kitty, kitty. You're too fast for gas grenades. And boomerangs just bounce off that hard little head of yours. What do we try next? Don't think I haven't noticed that you're backing me down this alley. It was real obliging of you to give up on that lady and her baby to chase after little old me. More sporting for you, isn't it? You bet it is. You haven't had your dinner put up this much of a fight in a long time, have you? Nowhere left to go. Sorry, Snookums. I really wanted to stall you till the boss got here, but I'm just too pretty to be a scratch toy today. Glad you agree. Bet you think you've got me cornered, don't you? Bet you don't think I can run right off the walls of this building. Bet you never heard of static shoes, have you? Sorry, kitty. Now to run up this wall to the roof so I can keep track of you. What the? My little friend is leaping from landing to landing on the fire escape. Following me right up to the top. You don't take no for an answer, do you? He's catching up to me. I'm high enough up now to use the gliders to fly over to that roof across the street. There. Let me see you make that jump, you orthodontally challenged tabby cat. Okay, that was pretty impressive. Well, I'm just about out of ideas. I don't know about you, but I could use a nap. Oh, hey. Hey, no nap. No nap. No cover. Nowhere to run. My, my, Grandma. What big guys you have. Anytime, boss. Anytime. Squirrel, cover your eyes. Boss, what? Cover my eyes? Just do it. What was that? A flash grenade. All I could think of. Don't stop the music. It's the first thing that's worked. Oh, boss, it's working. It's running away. Squirrel, your arm. Are you badly hurt? Nah, it's just a scratch. I'm... Whoa, okay. Take it easy. But, boss, we've got to get after it before it hurts somebody else. I don't think so, Kit. Sit down while I take care of that arm. But... No buts. Come here. (sighs) The sun's coming up. All of the killings have been at night. That's why I gambled the creature might be sensitive to light. And boy, was it ever. It couldn't skip out on lunch fast enough. Yes, the reaction was extreme. More so than if the creature were simply nocturnal by nature. The light seemed to cause it pain. And there was something in its cries. Well... We settled one thing. It's a saber-toothed tiger, all right. It certainly appears that way. Did you see any sign that it was being controlled? No. But there's more to this big cat than meets the eye. What do you mean? Well, I know this sounds crazy, boss, but I felt like I was being hunted by a human. There was an intelligence there. I can't explain. Take it easy, Kit. This morning we'll pay a call to a man who knows more about extinct mammals than any other alive. Dr. Astor Steben. Yes? What do you want? Dr. Steben? No, Dr. Steben is indisposed. Who are you? I'm a reporter from the Chronicle. This is my photographer. Pleased to meet you, Mr... Derry. Frank Derry. I'm Dr. Steben's assistant. I'm afraid he's not here. I thought he was indisposed. I'm not really at liberty to discuss the doctor's movements. Forgive me, there have been a great deal of inquiries lately. I'm sure there have. The doctor is the world's foremost authority on saber-toothed tigers, and my paper has proof one is stalking the city as we speak. The ramblings of hysterical bystanders is hardly proof, sir. Now, if you'll excuse me, Dr. Stephen cannot comment on any of this. He's not in the country and won't be back for some weeks. If we could just... Good day, sir. Well... So the one guy who can help us is indisposed, not here, has no comment, and is out of the country for weeks. Sound fishy? If anyone could remember seeing him at his apartment these last two weeks, and if his mail hadn't been left since the day before these attacks started, maybe not. 
As it is, I think his assistant knows more than he's saying. <laughs> He'd almost have to. How's the arm? It settled into a dull throb, thanks. Good. Let's get back in character. When Mr. Derry leaves for the day, we'll see what secrets that laboratory will yield to the Red Panda. It has become clear to me that my attempts to produce a living saber-toothed tiger solely from the cellular information contained in the frozen specimen will always result in failure. I am undaunted, however, and have begun to focus my work upon more untested ground. The initial tests involving the regenerative formula were a partial success, but something is limiting the power of the agent. I must find out what, or my research can never advance. I have made a tremendous leap forward. I have learned the cause of the regenerative agent's failure. Exposure to light. The energy emissions from light waves disrupt the process, even reverse it in some cases. If this procedure is to work, the test subject must be kept in darkness while the cellular transfer proceeds, particularly in the later stages. Any light at all could cause total failure of the experiment. Of course, the host subject must be human. How could I have failed to have seen that from the very beginning? The agent was designed to promote new growth of human tissue. It can only effectively transfer the saber-tooth essence to a human host. Obviously, this position cannot be filled with a volunteer. A man with no family, no one to notice his absence immediately... Someone who has business in the lab, which will not necessitate a kidnapping. The only choice is clear. My worthy young assistant, Mr. Derry, is about to become an integral part of the greatest scientific achievement mankind has ever known. Red Panda, these research notes, they're amazing. Yes, Squirrel. I think we've found our tiger. Frank Derry is in the middle of an horrific process of transformation. He may even be unaware of his crimes. What about Dr. Steven? I think I've found what's left of him in this trunk. Oh, boss. How awful. Justly served by his own treachery. Derry must have broken free and killed him weeks ago. Since then, he's been spending his days trying to reverse the process here in the lab and his nights on the streets, hunting beautiful young women. So, there was an intelligence directing the beast. Frank Derry's own subconscious. So now we know. And not a moment too soon. Sundown is in less than an hour. But boss, how are we going to catch Derry? Or whatever he is. How are we going to catch him in the act? Why do I not like that look in your eye? Kit... Have you ever considered changing your code name to the Dew Worm? All right. Are you clear what you have to do? Stand here and look tasty? Squirrel. Don't you squirrel me. I'm the one that has to play bait. I understand why we're using the park across the street from Derry's apartment. And I understand why you've called in a few favors from our friends in the city works department to get all the lights killed. But why does it have to be me? The saber tooth turned on you instead of attacking that young mother and her infant. An animal intelligence would simply have taken the easy meal. The saber tooth's hunting patterns are being colored by Derry's own animal instincts. So that's why he's been attacking. Hey, wait a minute. Are you saying I have to be the bait because I'm in some way alluring? Well, Derry seemed to think so. Ah, I see. Derry thought so. Yes. What were you doing at the time? Backflips. While throwing non-lethal ordnance. Well, some fellows like that sort of thing. Anyone I know? Kit Baxter, behave yourself. No. No? No. I'll stand here in the pitch black and play tiger bait to save the city. But by golly, you're going to say it's because I look darn good in a steel gray unitard and no self-respecting monster could possibly keep his paws off me. There he is. Don't worry. I'll be right over there. What, what do I do? 
Whatever you normally do to get a man's attention. Dress up like a rodent and jump off buildings? What? Nothing. Well, hello again, sailor. I had a lot more sympathy for you when I thought you were just a monster, you know. Maybe you didn't choose this, but you ain't doing a lot to stop it either. Come on, out of those shadows. Let me get a good look at you. What's the matter, Frankie boy? No guts? Come a little bit closer. See? No boomerangs, throwing stars, gas grenades, nothing. Come on. I've been a really good sport about this, but if someone doesn't turn those searchlights on... No! Everyone, keep the searchlights focused on the center of the circle. Don't let him get away. You heard the man. Keep those lights up. Squirrel, get out of there. Good time to look. The monster. It's turning back into human form. Oh, oh, it's horrible. Look, Squirrel. The saber-toothed tiger is gone. All that remains is Frank Derry. Is he alive? Yes. Though perhaps not for long. Derry? Derry, can you hear me? Sorry. What's that? So... So sorry. Tried to fight against it. Not... Not strong enough. Tried to reverse the process. We know you did, Frank. The notes. Destroy the notes. Never let this happen to anyone else. I promise we will. Red Panda, is he... Yes, Squirrel. He's dead. Like so much that is evil, Dr. Stephen's monstrous creation couldn't survive the harsh light of justice. You, uh, owe me something special for this one, you know. Me? Who else? I've already got to buy breakfast for an entire city works crew for operating these mobile spotlights for us. I am giving you a look which I imagine to be withering. Please let me know if I'm not doing it properly. Actually, I was thinking of putting a new engine in the Pandamobile. And? 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 Utility belt? Rocket boots? Keep talking. I'll let you know when you're getting warm. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 9, The Shadow Hunter, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Andrew Mazzetti, Gregory Z. Cook, Shannon Arnold, M. John Kennedy, Scott Moyle, Clarissa Dunetter Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>